And that is what we needed to have happen. So that is what happened. And so now if I push up, we can see a few. This is the last 24 hours. We go down the coast past Monterey. And remember, just kind of look at the colors, the light colors, like in this case is 0 0.01. When you go green, you're under, um, I think you're under a half inch. When you go blue, you're over a half inch. When you go dark, lighter blue like that. So you can kind of get the, the coating. And you can see where the rain fell in the last 24 hours. And this is all what I would call beneficial rainfall in the state of California. And now Southern California, you guys got a little respite because we do what I'm going to show you coming up here in the computer models is an opportunity for more rain in a few days. And that will help solidify some of those fuel moistures and get some soil, dirt, soil, some uh, moisture back into the soils and just help greatly. So that the next um, uh, um, Santa Ana wind event, which will happen because when it doesn't rain, you get this, this pressure gradients that set up often in Southern California. Um, it won't be as severe code red. Okay, so we go to the model. We start off, um, I'll put a circle around it. Sometimes I forget to do that, but I think you kind of can see it. Oh, and by the way, thank you for um, tuning in. I've got a bunch of new subscribers. I think it's because I'm retiring, but I appreciate it a lot. And tell a friend um, if you're interested, if they're interested, because it's, yeah, yeah, that's enough. Okay, so this is the load that brought the rain tonight, or this last 24 hours. It moves off. Okay, you see California, kind of a, just a nothing goes by there. And then here comes Friday morning. See that ridge flatten out and see the flow? That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, we get rain in the Bay Area, but look at this, right? That's awesome. This thing hits on LA. This is on Tuesday. Oh, that looks really juicy. See what we got? So this is, I'm all the way into February 8th now. So let's back it up and look at it again. Now, do you, when, when we look at the models, there's all kinds of different models. There's, there's, there's government models, there's private sector models, there's special interest models. Um, this is the GFS, which is sort of the ubiquitous, not very granular in terms of its resolution. In other words, it's kind of a broad brush. But that works, that works for us right now because this is a long range forecast. When you get into short range forecasts, then you get into HRRR, which is a rapid update model, the North American model. There's other models that update and have a smaller grid size. Grid size being, you know, I, I don't even know what the grid size is anymore on the GFS, but it's like 10 miles by 10 miles or something. I'll check that for you. And the other models will be smaller than that. Um, and 10 miles by 10 miles doesn't do you much good, especially in a large uh, area of microclimates. Okay, so here we go. This is, again, I'm going to back it up to Friday. And if you're going skiing on Friday, the snow will fall. Winter storm advisories in the mountains, maybe a winter storm warning. And then right here, especially on Sunday morning, you start to develop sort of a, a pretty significant zonal flow, which is that west to east flow, which has moisture. There's a ton of moisture involved. There's atmospheric river components to this system. And you can see the fire hose, or this is upper air jet, but you can see, look at that. That's through Thursday. So that whole next week, you guys, all next week, and I'm not trying to time it out for you other than in week by week, but... So what happens is it starts to cloud up Friday. We get rain in Northern California, Southern California, you see rain by Sunday. And the rain kind of lingers on and off for that following week, which is very typical for um, a late January, early February storm system. And then it kind of ridges out again, inside slider there on the 12th. This is our break. And then this will get in. So that's more towards the 13th. So we get, it looks like we have an opportunity for a good storm series as we go into um, next week. And starting this weekend, so here's the, the sea level pressure um, preset model. That last one was 500 millibar vorticity maximum. That's just a good way to go. What's the long wave pattern? What's the jet stream doing? It's a really good way to look at it. And this is this is boots on the ground. This is down on, on, on where we live. This is the surface wind, which is the lines, how close together. No wind here because there's no lines. As this front gets closer, you'll see the lines get closer together. That's a pressure gradient. And so the winds start kicking south on Friday. Not horribly strong, but breezy. And then there's your Friday into Saturday, right here. So still all Northern California event this weekend, but then it kicks down here, and that's Tuesday. Kind of wants to go into Southern California on Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. And then you get some pressure gradients as that high builds back in. See the lines, like that's, that's, a, that's gonna be a wind event for the Bay Area. For sure, if that happens. See why I'm looking at, right? Just those lines. Um, Southern California, too, is going to get some wind with that as well. That'd be a little bit of a Santa Ana potential. 
And yeah, for sure. So we'll get back. And it, fortunately, it appears that Southern California is going to get rain. So, and they've already had rain. So it's not going to be as code red. Remember, they hadn't had rain in months and months when that firestorm hit. So um, I, you can never relax in California, but just know that you can relax more. Um, this is the accumulation um, through the period. So what we'll see is that Friday system come in. It brings, you can kind of, I, it's hard to read those numbers. That's about a quarter of an inch right now. And it's just adding on, it's stacking on the rainfall. So there's Friday morning, there's Friday afternoon, there's Saturday morning, Marin County a half inch, Cape Mendocino almost two inches, Monterey, 10th of an inch. So real life, but look at Northern California, Lake Shasta, Lake Orville, you're getting lit up. So what do you got there? Two inches of rain. So that's through Friday Monday. So that's, that's got, ooh, that's money. That's a really good producer in our, that's a great, because that's where a lot of our water comes from. So when you start that blue circle, awesome. That's what you want. I mean, we want it everywhere, but you can see it creeping south as we get into Tuesday and working its way down into LA. So when you look at this map, that's, that's all the way through February 13th. This is going to be the general layout of the rain over the course of many days. And you can see it's centered on the uh, north part of the state much, much less further south. But I do see, you know, over the course of time, a half inch of rain in Southern California. That should help stave off the concerns for extreme fire danger. So hope that makes sense. I'm going to try to do the models. I think I should do them off the top so that because I think that's what you want to know, right? If you're planning stuff, um, unless there's a major event. And then we'll get to the more esoteric kind of surf, ski, whatever else stuff. Um, okay, so here's a little coastal fog, Ocean Beach, San Francisco. I saw some fog this morning. Uh, Mount Shasta up here, La Mount Lassen here, all part of the Cascade Rain. This is kind of where the Cascade Rain starts, the volcanoes all the way up to Mount Rainier. And then the Sierra Nevada here, all the way down to, um, well, all the way down to the Hatchapies. And you see the snow on the spine of the Sierra Nevada. So I like this map. I think this map is like if you were just like you're sitting at home with like me what, drinking coffee. I look at that map and I go, ah, I know what's going. It's like I used to when I lived a long time ago, I lived in Marin and I had a view out over like looked over Mount Tam and out towards Bolinas and I could see stuff. And I would get up in the morning and do exactly what I'm doing now. We didn't have the Internet back then, but I drink coffee. And I'd look and I could see, right? And that's the same thing. When I, I go, oh, maybe I'll go there today. I literally do this. I mean, if I have time. But like, I'll go, oh, maybe Point Reyes looks money today or whatever. Um, but it's a really nice way to assess your environment. This is also a good way. This is SS Ocean Beach. Got the that little uh, coastal strait. It's offshore. We picked it up on the satellite and you can see it out here. Small, small day. It's going to stay small for a few days, which is um, good. Give things a chance to dry out. Here's a crab fisherman. If you haven't gotten into it, it's kind of fun. I know. It's not exciting fishing at all because you just throw some bait out there and then you um, wait, 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 and the crabs get tangled up in it and you bring them in. I, I've, I've gotten like two or three before and it's pretty fun. This is Rocky Point in Hawaii, North Shore of Hawaii, and it's kind of morning there, right? Time difference. It's always, and it's funny thing about Rocky Point, actually the North Shore too, actually Hawaii, that when there's any wind at all, see it's kind of blown out and cruddy, not good at all, but by this afternoon, it'll glass off. Now, if we get a situation like this at Ocean Beach, San Francisco, or anywhere on the North Coast, even Santa Cruz, when the winds blow and it gets that bumpy, it don't clean up anytime soon, especially Ocean Beach, especially beach breaks. So Hawaii is interesting because it just, because if it's an island, it has different wind directions, um, different fetches. It cleans up weird, like literally if we watch this camera long enough, it'll clean up and look like this. This is really clean. Um, if it's had a south wind at Santa Cruz, this is Steamer's Lane, you would see a bump. Uh, gentlemen fishing off the rocks, that looks like a sick spot. You can't often do that, right? Because the swell is, that's how small the swell is. Tide is going low right now, but it's not a big difference between the high and the low. And what I mean by that is this tide swing, not like we saw during those king tides where you're going from seven feet to minus one, so eight feet of water. Today, I think the water moving at the Golden Gate Bridge is like five feet of water, which is a lot of four and a half feet it's a lot of water this is where uh we are we are at uh i-80 uh, above donner lake going these guys are coming they're going westbound and what i pick up here is where's the snow and i think that's going to change rapidly hopefully and we will be happy to see that these are this is north star i think i can get it to play i want it to play 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 oh look i did it um this is north star it's a kind of a good camera 
I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, it's a brave move. Okay, I'm doing it anyway. Okay, ooh, nice, we did it. Um, Northstar, I love these. Again, I think web cameras, I mean, it's like pictures are worth a thousand words, right? And so that's, this camera moves around. This is, um, yeah, ah, East Ridge. I haven't skied uh, Northstar in forever, but it really is. I mean, it's so beautiful. We're so fortunate uh, in, in Mammoth too. All, you know, you folks in LA, you got Laguna Beach. You got Mammoth, you got Vegas, or you got, not Vegas, you got uh, Palm Springs, California, Northern California. We got San Francisco, love it. We've got Tahoe, we've got Yosemite, which is all, it's all of ours. This state is awesome. Um, this is, I haven't skied here in forever either. This is um, Mount Rose. It used to be, this is how old I am, it used to be two mountains. It used to be Slide Mountain, let me see if I can do this. It used to be Slide Mountain and Mount Rose. And then they, it's not going to happen. Oh, well, they turned it into one mountain. And it's basically where the folks from Reno go to play. I mean, it's a lot, it's a, it's a really awesome ski resort. I'm now I'm obsessed with getting this to play. Let's see if I can do it. Nah, I'm not going to do it. Let's try it again, though. Um, it's, it's where the folks from Reno, most of them would like to go because it's easier drive for them. And we are um, also seeing people from Tahoe go 